who was speaking in Abeokut at the Ogun State Capitol, while hosting members of the new Nigeria group at the Oblushegwa Basinger Presidential Library in the State Capitol. The point is this, when you have an in an ineffective and incompetent government, the we are all victims. And don't let anybody deceive you. Those of you who are in business, your business will have been better today if we have a competent and uh, 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 effective and performing government. It will happen. As I said, I'm giving excuse, uh, we, we met many challenges. Now, if there are no challenges, then you wouldn't need to come. Yes. 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 Huh? Yes. If there are no challenges, you don't need to come. And you are, you come in because you know that there are challenges. And then giving us excuse that you have many challenges, that's why you haven't achieved results. And then you still want to go. The first lesson I learned in my military uh, training is never reinforce failure. What we have now is failure. Never you reinforce it. Well, you heard him there, the former president. We have reached out to the presidency on the latest comment of the former president. And here is what the special advisor on media and publicity to President Muhammad Obuari, Mr. Femi Adishina, said. Uh, established is that President Muhammad Buhari will never join issues with former President Elisha Mwabasuga. One, yeah, President, former President Mwabasuga was a superior in the military. President Buhari was indeed the minister under him, under his military regime. So President Buhari will never join issues with him. Two, what former President Mwabasuga just said, it's not different from what he said in his letter of January 23 in Israel. And uh, an adequate response has been given to that letter by the Minister of Information, Alaji Lai Mohammed. So the, mini the response that Alaji Mohammed gave to that letter suffices for what former President Abbasadeh has just said. Well, is the former president saying something new or reiterating the contents of his last memo? Let's quickly get views of my panel tonight on the program. Joining us from Abuja studio is the convener of the Civil Society Situation Room, Mr. Clement Wankon from London. He's a political analyst, Mr. Kyle De Okunamisi. Mr. Uh, Clement Wankon, uh, from what a former president has said about the present state of the country, what is your immediate reaction to these, especially as we look ahead of 2019 general election? Well, again, uh, this will be said again. Um, the expectation. Is governance that had set in during the uh, rule of the former regime, the former president, would be corrected. This regime offered so much promises. Uh, unfortunately, I think the expectations have not been met. And uh, you can see across the country the criticisms of the failure of government. Uh, the insecurity has worsened and, in fact, exacerbated, uh, especially um, with uh, headsmen um, going all over the country, killing people. And it looks like the security services uh, are doing nothing about it or don't care. Uh, and uh, you saw the former chief of army uh, staff, former minister of defense, uh, General T.Y. Danjuma, uh, basically accused the military of colluding um, with um, these um, gunmen that are going around killing people. Uh, in fact, the military was accused of, um, of um, aiding these people. And in any society, this would actually be 
uh, a question whether you are actually accusing the military of treason. So I think there are several issues when you look in at the situation in the country today that people are not satisfied with where we are. Um, and it's not just General Obasanjo or General T.Y. Danjuma. Uh, across the country, people are very, very dissatisfied about where things are. And in fact, the sense that the government doesn't care, is not listening, is not responding to issues. Uh, the economic situation is just as bad. Um, the security situation has not improved. Maybe there was a slight improvement at some point, but it's deteriorated even to worse situations. Uh, security generally has become really bad, and I think the country is really in a very, very sad situation. And this mounting criticisms of the government is evidence of the fact that um, the dissatisfaction levels are very high and people are looking for a change or indeed a positive response from the government. This government is not showing that it wants to give a response at all. Let me get perhaps a, a political perspective from Coyote uh, in, from London. Uh, uh, Coyote, uh, your perspective, if you look at what the political implication of this, look, when your former boss keeps criticizing you, uh, is this just for a political reason? What effect do you think or implication these will have for the Buhari government? Now, he has not de uh, decided or he has not stated that he's going to run for a second time. What exactly do you think this means for the Buhari government? Uh, it has serious implications. Uh, Obasanjo is known to uh, as um, and a reputation as a rebel rouser. Uh, he loves that attention. Uh, he reads the the mind of the Nigerian people. He plays safe, just like he did during the civil war when the the victory had already been secured by. Uh, the, the, the brave fighters, he, he placed himself as an opportunist and claimed victory. So over time in our national history, General Obasanjo tries to play himself as a hero of the, of the people. Uh, when he is part and parcel of the problem, he's actually more the problem because he gave us the sick uh, Yaradwa and the incompetent um, Jonathan that led us to uh, an old uh, Buhari who seems to be ineffective. So Nigerian people should be very wary of uh, these near, later day heroes who should be do dumped into the dustbin of history. Yes, the Buhari government has not performed uh, to expectation, uh, but who is uh, Basanjo to tell us when he is part of the problem? What is quite important is that there needs to be a transition from the old to the new, a transition from the same set of people who have uh, more or less recycled themselves in our, in our national politics. Uh, what he's saying is not new. Uh, if Obasanjo is not happy, uh, he, he will say it, especially when his interest is at play. Remember, as a kingmaker, uh, he, he wants to be relevant. And if, if attacking Buhari makes him relevant, he will ignore some of the positives of the Buhari government and emphasize on the negative. Yes, the Buhari government has not done quite well. They've not done well enough, but that is not to take away some of the uh, achievements they've, they've made. They've locked shop for, for some of the corrupt people. They've not done very well in that aspect, but they've moved us a bit ahead of the Buhari, of the Obasanjos and the Jonathans. Uh, in, in the case of insecurity, it's a great challenge. The government has not uh, met the expectation of the Nigerian people. Okay, uh, now to another topic. When the All Progressives Congress released what they said is a list of looters, well, th that's what they call it. They are apparently aware of the fact that it would create some ripple effects. Maybe not the exact what they envisage it, it, uh, to, for it to have, but as after the second batch of the alleged looters list was released, members of the PDP and some of the people whose names were listed have reacted. So let's give you some reactions to the looters list, alleged looters list. This one is coming from uh, our former aviation minister, Mr. Uh, Femi Fanikaode. And this is what he said. He said, and I quote, I wish to make it abundantly clear that this is a nonsensical and utterly shameful, and I hereby reiterate the fact that I'm totally innocent of any wrongdoing. A major uh, opposition voice, uh, or well, someone who has always uh, criticized his government, uh, Governor of Ekiti State, Ayodele Farashe, has said, President Muhammad Buhari is presiding over the most corrupt government in the history of Nigeria and protecting looters of the country's commonwealth. Nigerians have seen through their deceit and we no longer buy that fake image of integrity they are trying to sell. 
Now, another uh, a former governor in Niger said, Papangida Ali, you said, my attention has been drawn to federal government lease where I was mentioned to have received a sum of 1.6 billion naira from the Office of the National Security Advisor. Let me categorically state for the record that I never received such amount from the Jonathan's administration. Now, this is coming from uh, uh, the chairman of uh, the, the PDP, uh, Prince Uche Secondus. And he says that the national chairman of the People's Democratic PDP is giving the Minister of Information and Culture for the eight hours to withdraw his labella statement against him of his litigation. Now, a former PDP spokesperson, Chivolista Metu, says that by this publication, the federal government has breached our constitution by seeking to burden me with two criminal trials on the same charge, one before Justice Okona Bank and the other before the media. These are some of the reactions trailing some of uh, the least released by the federal government. And the thrillers we're getting is that there will be a barrage of court cases against that statement tomorrow. So we go on a break. So the past week, we saw former Deputy Senate President uh, Senator Ibrahim Mantu in an exclusive interview with Channel Salvation confess that he helped PDP rig election. The PDP has reacted. So we look at what his confession is and the implication for Nigerian election. That's next on the program. Join us again, everyone. The first lesson I learned in my military uh, training is never reinforce failure. What we have now is failure. Never you reinforce failure. Never you reinforce failure. Let failure be failure. I'm gone. And if you do not see what you should see, you will then be a victim of what you don't like. Senator Manto, can I just quickly clarify? Did I hear you say that you helped rig elections before now? Uh, let, let me tell you one thing. Yes. Yes. I did. Because I'm now confessing the truth. I, 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 look, what, what do I mean? I don't have to go and change elections. But you know when you provide money, you give money to INEC boys to help you if they see any chance that they, 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 they should uh, favor you. You provide money to the security. Any, all our elections in the past, I've been in this game for about 40 years. And I tell you, each time, it's not necessarily when I'm contesting election, but when my party sponsors a candidate. I would like that candidate to win election. And what, what we used to do before, we make provision for INEC, we make provision for security, we make provision for even agents of other parties, you know, so that they will, so that they will not, you know, raise any objection to uh, whatever we are able to get. So whether I, do, I, I, I rig myself or not, by providing those resources, financial uh, inducement to the officials, I am rigging election. Do you think that we can diminish or remove that influence as 2019 approaches? I believe so because, you see, if people are born again like me and they refuse to do it, if we, the players, the, unless we give before somebody will take, right? So don't give and then we will not get a taker. We will not get a taker. The most, why, you will not even ask me why am I thinking this way. Look, I am tired of being, work, of being seen as a criminal in the streets of the world because we are a Nigerian. Welcome back, everyone. It's 319 days to the general elections, and the political climate is getting more polarized by the day. Uh, uh, political actors either playing out a script to gain advantage or build narratives to play mind games. Amid this, there is a growing trust deficit among the people who feel played by those who represent them in government. We've been talking about a series of issues. Now, we take on... The conversation around what Senator Ibrahim Mantu uh, said and his conf confession about rigging elections. But he says he's now born again. My partner tonight is uh, 
a renowned lawyer and civil rights activist, uh, is a convener of the Civil uh, Society Election Situation Room. Mr. Clement Umwako in Abuja City and from London is a political analyst, Kyode Okunda, Mr. Many thanks, uh, uh, gentlemen, again for your time. Mr. Umwako, what do you make of this confession by a, tep a former deputy Senate president? He doesn't mean his words, does he? And what exactly, if that kind of person comes out with this kind of statement, what does it mean for our electoral process? Well, this is nothing new. This has been going on uh, in our electoral process, and that's been part of the work that civil society uh, and election stakeholders have been working on to improve the electoral process. Uh, and it's not just one political party. Uh, all of the political parties try to find advantage for themselves. It's the same script that they all play out. They put out money for uh, the electoral commission officials. They put out money for security, whether it's the police, they put out money uh, for, for different people. Uh, if, we, if we look back to elections held, even very recently, um, well, going back to 2015, we did see elections in 2015 postponed. It was first supposed to be on February 14, 2015. It was postponed, according to the government, then uh, putting pressure on INEC to say that they needed to deal with the security situation in the Northeast. And it was postponed to March 28, uh, 2015 ostensibly, of course, to prepare the ruling party at the time to be able to use the money that uh, it has uh, to, to try to secure victory for itself. More recently, in a Doe state, we did see the governorship election in that state um, postponed by two weeks. Um, from our understanding, it was because the, the uh, government in power in the state hadn't readied itself to... Um, get the election uh, 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 in the way that it wanted. In Anambra State recently, we saw the rule of money. So there's a whole lot of attempt and effort being made by all of the political parties. And whether it is um, Senator Ibrahim Mantu or indeed any other senator or elected official or indeed party official from any of the parties, it would be the same, the same script. And that's why we're looking at the whole issue of electoral reform. How do you minimize uh, the influence of uh, peddlers uh, who want to subvert the process? How do you minimize the influence of money on elections? These are key issues that confront us. So what this tells us really is that our electoral process has its huge challenges. It's still a work in progress. We're not there yet. And this country needs to be able to put together some machinery, some mechanism to ensure that we have indeed free, fair, and credible elections in Nigeria. We're not there yet. There's a lot to be done. And I think that Senator Mantu's uh, confessions, in quotes, actually just um, points out what every politician, whatever the party does. Uh, uh, Mr. Ogunda, uh, like Mr. Wanko just said now, uh, it's not new. Uh, a lot of people, including journalists, including, uh, uh, civil society organization, even the politicians know the way some of these things go. Uh, but when a politician comes forward to say, this is how we do it, we bribe these, we'll give money to these and do this and do that, what exactly is a hope? Do you see money played? I mean, money played a big role in 2019. Will it happen? I think, yeah, it's going to play a very massive role. I think uh, Mantu's confession is a welcome development. Uh, I think the 2015 election uh, was a, a, a better improvement to the elections we've had. Yes, there will be rigging. But I think it's not just our election, electoral, uh, ele uh, the rigging takes place on election day. I think the electoral system is rigged from the way it's set up. Uh, if you ask yourself, how come uh, up to now, uh, some state governors are here to conduct uh, local government elections. We're, run we're running a democracy uh, that should have uh, federal government, state government, and local government. And uh, in some places, you have school administrators for as long as the governor stayed there for eight years. Uh, political parties don't have internal democracies. Uh, they impose uh, uh, the chairmen and board members on, on, on members for as long as they for four years for, for a time in office. There are no internal democracy. You don't use um, uh, financial reforms whereby there is a limit to the uh, amount you can spend on election. Even the role of the media, uh, we don't regulate the amount of time a media platform can spend on uh, a year time they give to a particular party 
compared to another party to give them equal air time. So it's not just the rigging that takes place on the on the day of the election. Rigging starts from the day they're sworn in, where you can't have independent candidacy. Voters are not educated. They see election day as the day they get their own share of the national cake. So if a, if a politician comes and gives them a bag of rice, that is it. They don't care what takes place. So if we don't check this, uh, uh, take an holistic uh, view of ch changing the system to democratize it and make it open in the four-year time and not just on election day, uh, we will still continue to see right. rigging. But okay. the introduction of PC, it's been reduced. All right, uh, Mr. Clement Wonko, the Electoral Act amendment seems to have perhaps um, uh, suffered a step back, considering the fact that the president had rejected uh, some portions of uh, that uh, amendment bill, which went to him. Uh, now, what are your fears? Because uh, we saw the EFCC saying it wants to partner with the, uh, the electoral umpire to stop uh, the exchange of money for votes during the election. Do you think that uh, we are going to go back to the old days, perhaps, or what we've seen in the past with this electoral amendment bill and the setback it's received? I think the politics has been played with the electoral act amendment. Um, and Kaede Gundamisi made the point about the, the PVC um, and the need for wholesale electoral reform. I think that's the way to go. Uh, the, the permanent voters card and the uh, introduction of additional uh, electronically uh, um, motivated devices uh, for using elections becomes really important. And if we look at the amendments that have been proposed, beyond the contentious issue of um, sequence of elections, there are several, several very positive amendments uh, in, in, the, in the law that uh, has been proposed, including uh, um, making sure that uh, within the legal context it is captured the use of the direct uh, data capture machine, uh, but also the PVCs and all of the electronic components that have been introduced. Uh, all of this is going to be thrown away if we don't move uh, to check uh, the politics that is being played. And the politics being played here is the National Assembly feeling that it can muster sufficient numbers to override the veto of the president. The president, of course, being quite firm in his decision not to sign an electoral law that has the order of sequence of the elections uh, real. Arranged. I think that this is something that both the executive and the legislature need to sit down and come up with a solution that Nigerians uh, accept. As it is now, both sides are indeed threatening the conduct of free and fair elections in 2019. Right. I know that the National Assembly uh, has the right to um, pursue the way that it is going, but there are several issues contained okay. um, in that provision of the law that the National Assembly has in its wisdom and listening to Nigerians passed into law. These are right. positive things, and I think that the presidency needs to sit down with the National Assembly in order to agree on a law that is convenient for all. But I think that this impasse does not help Nigeria. All right. Uh, that, that's Mr. Clement Uwanko there, a lawyer, the rights activist, is the convener of the Civil Society Election and Situation Room, alongside uh, Mr. Kaude Ogunda, a political analyst, talking to us from London in the United Kingdom. Gentlemen, many thanks for your time on the program tonight. And also, many thanks for you. You've been watching. Whatever you may be watching, thank you so much for watching. I'm Shion Wakimbale. Bye-bye.